What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Thank you for joining me, and I'll show you what we're going to make. So, today, we're making something really simple, something you can use for when you finish your video and you want to throw a quick subscribe text onto the screen, but you want it to kind of show up in a nice, cooler way. So, we're making something like this. Colors fly on, and your URL pops out at the bottom. So, subscribe URL slash your name. Um, I've seen things like this before on YouTube and I figured I'd cover it really fast. It's super, super easy and will not take long at all. And as always, feel free to download the project file to uh, have it, take a look. Um, other than that, let's get started and learn how to make this thing. Okay, so first off, what we're going to do is create a new composition. And what's really cool about this is we're going to make it in such a way where uh, it'll work for 4K videos or 1080p videos. So really awesome. So we'll do our width, um, 1920 by 1080. Uh, make sure your frame rate is at 60 frames a second. So it'll fit any video you want to do, especially gaming videos, since they're 60 frames per second. Let's make the duration about 10 seconds. Doesn't really matter, honestly. Background color black does oh, works for me. So in our um, original, there's one, two, three, four, five different colors. So one two, three, four, five colors that show up. So really simple. What you're gonna do is right click into your little project panel down here, new solid. All right, so new solid comes up. Let's call it a um, uh, medium red solid or just let's just call it solid. Click OK, really simple. Go to your effects and presets real fast. Click fill, drop your fill onto here and let's make it a completely different color this time let's start with yellow cool so we got our solid first thing we need to do is make it fly onto the screen like the other ones were so if we can see it's like moving its way right onto the screen cool so what we're gonna do is click P on our keyboard and keyframe the position by tapping this little uh, stopwatch right here. And this is where we want it to end up. So about a second and a half of a transition. Go right here, click your you know, solid, hold shift on your keyboard and move it off to the side. Right about here. So what it'll do is it will fly in. But it's really static, it doesn't move too cool, so we need to make this a little nicer. So we'll highlight both these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then click the graph editor right here. And as you can see, it's just like not much going on graph. There's these two lines going up here. If you can't see this, we're using the uh, speed graph right here. So right now, it goes in a little nicer, but we can make this nicer. So go back into the graph editor, Grab the little point right here, click right here, and hold. I usually hold shift. I don't think it really does anything. Pull this angle in and pull this angle in. A whole bunch. Grab this one again. Move it over as far as we can. And now, if we ram preview this, it is way too fast. So bring this back some. Bring this one back. Oh. That's pretty good. We can see what this looks like. Nice. So, this will work. You could probably slow this down a little bit. Just like that. So, play with your graph editor until you like the motion. Other than that, let's continue. Get out of the graph editor. Next, what we'll do is we will command D this solid so command D move it down our timeline a little bit go to our fill and just drag it up to a different color let's go to like uh, that colors good and now if we play it there's two and if you can kinda imagine what we're doing here we're going down our timeline Changing the colors as we go to something we like. Command D. 
Command D, move it down the timeline. Change, oh, that's what happened. We duplicated our fill on accident. Take this fill, Let's make it green. Command D, move this down our timeline. And we'll take this one and we'll make it orange. It always ends up on orange somehow. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Cool. So next we need to put some text on here. What we'll do is we'll grab our text tool, click right here in the middle, we'll go to Babis New in our character panel. If your character panel is not up, go to Window. And I'm pretty sure it's a uh, character right here. Yep. Babis New. Let's type subscribe. Highlight it all. Let's make it bold and big. Take our anchor point, grab it, hold command to snap it to the center of our text. And then we'll go to window. A line is already open. It's in here somewhere. There it is. A line. And we'll put this text in the center, just like that. Boom, 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 boom. Then we'll highlight these uh, position keyframes, key frames, Command C and Command V on our text. So it goes in like this. But we want it to move over a little earlier. So click U on your keyboard to see when these keyframes start. Let's move this layer back some and move this over a lot. So it's kind of falling in about right here. Give this a little play. Looks pretty good so far. Now we're going to add a little more detail to all of this. We're going to add a bunch of drop shadows. So on the second layer, I never do the bottom layer, but the second layer, we'll go through layer, layer style, drop shadow. Drop down our drop shadow options right here. Take the angle and spin it around until we can kind of see it off the side of this right there. Go to our spread. Eh, don't worry about that. Go to our size. Make it a little larger. As you can see, it's like a almost like on top of each other. Hence the drop shadow. Make it a little further off. Change the opacity a little bit. Like that. Copy this drop shadow. So Command C. And then Command V. Command V. Command V. And on our text, we'll also paste the drop shadow but we'll make it look a lot different. So down on our layer style, drop on the drop shadow, take the size, make it zero, take the angle, put it off to the bottom right here, make the distance a little further, and the opacity up to, well, let's make it 50%. Something like that. What we'll do is I'll probably make the text a little bigger, so hit S on your keyboard, Scale it up a little bit. Go back to this one. Looking pretty good. Then we'll change the fill. That's what we're missing. Yeah. Purple? Purple's good? Yeah, purple will work. And all we need now is the other text. So click the text tool one more time, click on your keyboard, and if I'm not mistaken, this font that I was using is called Traveling Typewriter, okay. So on this text layer, we'll type youtube.com slash Maxwell Ridgeway. Highlight all of this. Type traveling typewriter. And I'll put the link down in the description to where to find the um, uh, the font, both Bayless New and this typewriter font. Ooh. Make it a lot smaller. About right there. 
move this over to about right here where the final position will be and now it's got to like make this cool little like shoom, like that where it kind of falls down and hits right there so our anchor point is already in the corner right where we want it to be so if it's not in the corner when you make it just hold command move your anchor point and snap it to the corner and we're using the anchor point move tool right here pan behind but it's used to move anchor points so what we need to do now is uh, goes right here and it'll be in about right there and I wrote Nax Ridgeway for some reason so we're gonna change this back to an M there you go Maxwell Ridgeway then click P in your keyboard for your text key the position and then click R key the rotation now click U to show both these keyframes move it back some and do the rotation just do three degrees makes it a little off like that so whoop, right there and right here we're gonna do one degrees right here we're gonna move it down some and then up here it's gonna go up a lot let's actually move this down the timeline just a hair about right there so it's gonna it's gonna wish down just like that and then we're gonna do this we're gonna right click key from assistant easy ease all of this and let's spread this out just a little bit right there right there and grab this right here and move it over a little bit so woo, just like that and let's go into the graph editor real fast actually grab the beginning this is the first keyframe of the motion make it go in a little quicker so it plays in right here yada 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 we know what these look like so let's move this forward we need this right here it's playing oh the anticipation is relentless Oop, need to play out a little longer so I can see it nice cool so play with these keyframes a good bit right here the position finishes right before the um, rotation finishes so it's kinda like halfway and then pulls up but once you do this kind of stuff a good bit you'll get used to kinda understanding keyframes and how they work and you'll kind of in a, in a little, you'll figure out a way to do it just by knowing how to do it you'll understand them a little more but it takes a lot of practice that's why I suggest using lots of keyframes on moving stuff around and eventually you understand it so next we need it to like almost look like it's behind subscribe and appear from under here this is actually really simple what we'll do is grab a shape and we'll just drag out a shape doesn't really matter about like that's fine we can move it the layer back just right before the uh, um, actually you know it needs to be all the way it needs to be the entire thing because it needs to cover up this stuff so this will be track mat alpha mat inverted which means it will show when it's not on top or under the shape or under the shape excuse me so the shape disappears when we turn track mat on and if your track mat's not showing just columns I think it's in modes yeah turn your alphabet inverted so when it reveals itself behind the shape it like flies out through but the only thing I don't like about this is that it, it's just a hard line hard line I want it to look like it's fading through really simple right click this layer go to mask new mask and it'll create a mask that's the exact same size as the layer so go down to mask um, and then go to feather and just feather a little bit you can even take the position of your shape click P and move it down some and voila move this back some again we accidentally cut it off voila and it flies out just like that but we moved it down too far so let's move it up some about right there because it's still fading itself off 
So whoosh, just like that. Cool. So that essentially is the very first part of this tutorial, making this thing. It didn't take as long as I expected, but um, it's pretty much done. Now we just need to format this thing for 1080p and 4K. So, and add a final touch that makes it really, really nice. What we're gonna do is uh, make this a little prettier. So right click all of this, highlight everything, pre-compose, click OK. Then what we'll do is go to our effects and presets over here, type CC, force motion blur. So F-O-R, force motion blur. And what this does is creates like just motion blur. It makes it look really nice when everything's moving onto the screen. Really, really pretty. Cool, so now this is done. You could render this out as your, you know, 1080p version of this. Um, so your composition, composition settings, we can call it, you know, 1080p. Right there. Click OK. So this is, you know, 1080p, just like that. But what we need to do now is create a new composition. Right click New Composition and call it the 4K. So we'll do this 3840 by 2160. Click OK. And drag 1080p into here. And it's too small right now. Click Scale. Let's do 200% to make it. 4K, but there's a problem. Since we upscaled it, it's a little bit blurry. The edges, you can see, they're not hard edges, they're not fine. So how do we fix this fine edge issue? Really simple. We jump into 1080p, and we jump into here by double clicking, and this little asterisk, little four comp layer, collapse, transform, vervector layer, the little continuous rasterize thing, basically makes it a vector. I read that terribly, I'm sorry. Um, makes everything a vector so when you upscale things in larger compositions they stay the same size now this doesn't work for 3d layers but it does work for flat 2d layers what we're using so jump into 1080p turn this on then jump back into 4k and turn this on and you'll see that this will jump to be a little sharper it takes it a second to render but once it does it's good to go it's super sharp and you're not going to have to worry about it being uh, not good. So, oh, there it goes. It's sharp now. So, the final step in this is we need to render this in such a way where we can keep it as a file to put on top of our video. So, behind this is nothing. So, we can just lay this onto our gaming footage, any other footage we have. So, go to Composition, add the render queue, um, call it whatever you want. Go to your output module right here, click the lossless setting jump over here into video output and in channels click RGB plus alpha which will render it without a background um, unless you have one so make sure your backgrounds are gone and it's just the shapes that are coming on and this little uh, checkerboard will be invisible so you can take this layer and just lay it onto another video another layer inside of Premiere or Final Cut Pro and it'll be a new video so I hope this was helpful I hope you found this tutorial cool and insightful and uh, thanks, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, on the screen now is a video that I shot in Coney Island. Feel free to check it out. It's a lot of really pretty 4K footage that I filmed. I like editing. I like showing stuff like this. So a little tiny short film with some music. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to watch it. Click on the screen now and go enjoy it. But as always, I'm Max. Thanks for uh, joining in, tuning in, watching, and you know the works. Um, please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. I really, really appreciate it. Peace.